Hi, how are you? We've got some good data to look at today, but like all things in San Diego, nothing really happens when the weather looks like this. But I'm gonna do my best. So first things first, gotta take Jack to school and then hit the gym, work on the dad bod. So one of the things about batteries is that they don't last forever. And it's always been a mystery as to why Tesla batteries do. So that's kind of the idea with this video is I want to break that down and kind of understand it a little bit. So I've looked at this before and there was some data from these guys in Belgium that were updating a Google Sheet and that worked well. It was really interesting. If you guys recall when we did that video, I think I covered it twice. And I think that was really insightful, but now I have a lot more data because the thing is, is that with data, you need a whole lot of it in order to kind of tease out the signal from the noise. Um, so what that means is that when you have a small sample or a particularly biased sample of data, you can get kind of a false positives in, in, in results that aren't actually true. And so what I'm excited about, why we're, I'm doing this video again today, is because I have a lot more data now coming in from a way that's much more reliable. So. Let's dig into that in a moment, but first I want to talk about kind of the concept here. And before we do that, time to fight dad bod. Back here in the office, gonna take a look and explain how batteries actually degrade so we can understand what this means in terms of Tesla. But first, a message from our sponsor. So Wonder Capital sponsored the show before and we have a really good partnership going on because I love what they do. I love that they're helping fight climate change and support local businesses and kind of disrupting the finance world because the traditional banks just really don't understand solar and how it works. So if you haven't seen my interview with their founder and CEO, Brian Bursick, about the tariff and what's going on in the solar industry, I highly recommend that. And I would stay tuned for more because we're gonna do some really fun projects in the future. But if you wanna learn more about how you can help the, all of these things, these small businesses get solar funded and even earn money as an investor, then go to teslanomics.co slash wonder. I'll put a link in the description down below. Okay, back to the data. So Tesla uses these lithium ion batteries. This is an 18650 cell. This is what you get in the Model S and X. And then in the Model 3, you have a different one, the 2170. And the big question is always, uh, why do they degrade or how does it happen? And, and why do Tesla batteries seem to have this magical power to live longer than all the other devices and things that use basically the same technology? Well, I did some research and basically what happens is there's two sides to a battery. There's two parts to it. And I'll, I'm gonna read from a, a battery test engineer that posted this on Reddit in a very simple way um, because I think that's the best way to really think about these things. Okay, so he says the batteries have a few main parts, the anode negative and the cathode positive and a separator between them and some stuff in between, usually a liquid that conducts ions. When you charge a battery, you are cramming a whole bunch of the lithium ions into the anode, kind of like absorbing water into a sponge. When you use the battery, these ions flow to the cathode, generating electrical current. That's what powers your devices. Over time, by cramming ions in and out of the anode and cathode, you begin to damage the sponge so it can't hold as many ions anymore. Now, there was another study I found on Popular Mechanics about this that talked about it in a little bit more detail. And they basically said, a high-end lithium polymer battery can lose about 20% of its capacity after a thousand charge cycles. Another way to think of this is to imagine that every time you recharge your laptop or your Tesla in this case, you shave a few seconds off its maximum battery life erratic charging and heat can speed up the degradation. 
Batteries degrade even if you don't use them. According to battery testing from Cadex Electronics, a fully charged lithium ion battery will lose about 20% of its capacity after a year of typical storage. Increase the temperature to just over 100 degrees Fahrenheit and in a hot attic, for example, and the number is up to 35%. On the other hand, an empty battery pack can eventually fall into deep discharge, at which point the battery's protection to prevent the power from reaching the defective battery cells is triggered. This leaves the battery unable to charge. So that's the typical, so that's the typical scenario in which the batteries just kind of lose their charge and this is what you see, but Tesla batteries seem to defy these physics here. And not being somebody that's a battery technician, I'm not gonna go into how this works and all of that. I, I, I do think that it's really interesting, but I also believe that I'm fully not qualified to talk about that. I'm gonna come at it from the data science approach, which is one I've been employing in business for almost 20 years now. And that is to look at the results. Look at what the data is trying to tell us. We now have data from Teslab to look at this in a more objective way. What Teslab does is they are kind of like Fitbit for your Tesla, and there are thousands of Tesla owners that have it installed. Every time they drive, it logs their trip. Every time they charge, it logs the charging because it gives you data like your phantom drain and your efficiency rating and those kind of things. And and using that database, I've been able to basically come up with a new study on battery degradation. So with that, what we're able, what we're going to do is see what the data shows. And let's put aside the physics of how it may or may not work for now. So in this study, we have over 2,600 vehicles that we looked at and almost 200,000 distinct times that they've charged their vehicles with over 500,000 trips, 500,000 times they've actually driven. With the max endodometer or the one with the most distance on it at 228,000 miles and the distribution of the percent battery remaining, meaning how much charge is left compared to the original charge, we can see that almost all of them are really high in the 90s, if not close to 100%. And this data does include cars that were all the way back to 2012, up to ones that are very new in 2018. And you can see that at 100%, we have 33.59, 23% of them are at 99%. And if you were to take basically every Everything from 95 and above, you're looking at 91% of the cars. So we're looking at a sizable amount of data and you can see that 91% of them have 95% or better of their battery remaining. And if you wanna take a little bit deeper look into this, we can break out each individual car and plot them and then see a trend that appears. And this is really interesting because we can slice this by a few different factors. One being charge count. So looking here, each dot is a vehicle. The y-axis is how much battery percentage is remaining, and the x-axis in this case is how many charges that this car has actually done. So some of them have an extremely large amount, and other ones have, you know, very few. If you want to look at drive count, we can do that as well. You can see that it still is pretty much the same story. It gets a little bit more spread out. The average temperature is kind of an interesting one because you would think that maybe ones that are in extreme cold or extreme heat have higher degradation but that doesn't really pan out. You can see that the ones with the higher amount of degradation kind of run the gamut here from the low 40s to the upper 80s. And on total miles, this was an interesting one because a lot of them, of course, are bunched up. A lot of the cars are pretty new. But again, there's not a clear pattern that emerges. And in fact, a lot of the ones that have that high amount of degradation appear in these low mileage. So there may be something going on with these cars individually that maybe Tesla needs to look at. But the overall trend, the overwhelming story here is that these things hold their, their charge for a long time. So when it comes to your Tesla, I wouldn't worry about this. Don't forget that you have an eight year infinite mile warranty unless you have a Model 3, then it's 100,000 miles. In any event, 
the battery is gonna outlast your likelihood of keeping the car. Now, I know some of you will argue that you're gonna keep the car forever, and I applaud you for that. I I'm not one of those people. But I do think there's a case to be made here about what Tesla's doing with their batteries that hopefully other manufacturers of electric vehicles and maybe even potentially other manufacturers of electronics could employ to help really just make these things serve us better as consumers. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys back here next time.